The Blair Witch Mythology The Blair Witch Project, released in 1999, was a landmark film in modern horror cinema, grossing hundreds of millions of dollars on an incredibly small budget, and igniting a flurry of similar low-budget found-footage horror films. While it has also been the subject of plenty of criticism, derision, and parodies, its success remains undisputed, and started a small media franchise, including two film sequels, along with multiple video games and novels. Throughout all of this runs an interesting set of lore related to the titular witch, and various events that have transpired in some woods in Maryland. This won't be a completely exhaustive compilation of lore connected to the Blair Witch, but will definitely hit all of the major points. In the year 1634, a colonel in the British army named Blair founded a fort in the recently established colony of Maryland, named after himself. Fort Blair was established to defend against attacks from Native Americans, who had sabotaged an expedition by Blair into the Black Hills Forest, as they greatly feared it. As the years went by and Fort Blair expanded into a town, an Irish woman sailed across the ocean to Baltimore in 1769. Her name was Ellie Kedward, and some reports claim that she herself had a very dark past, including her mother dying during childbirth, and her father being taken captive during some revolts and was tortured and disemboweled while she was forced to watch. She was then raped, beaten, and tortured herself and finally left for dead, but was taken in by a hermit who taught her some aspects of the occult. Later, she ended up in an asylum and as a prostitute, losing seven pregnancies in the process and becoming further involved in witchcraft. The veracity of these reports are hard to discern and are perhaps only an attempt to create a much darker background to Ellie's life. Regardless, she ended up sailing from Ireland to Baltimore in 1769 and settled in the township of Blair, Maryland. In the winter of 1785, however, several children accused Ellie Kedward of witchcraft, as she had apparently drawn some of their blood, possibly due to an illness that she was attempting to help with. This was well after the events of the Salem Witch Trials, but fear of witchcraft wasn't completely extinct. The town of Blair deemed Ellie guilty, and she was banished from the town into the harsh winter, with some reports claiming that she was actually tied to a tree in the Black Hills and left for dead. In the winter of the following year, all of her accusers and half of the town's other children gradually vanished from Blair, with no explanation. The people of Blair feared a curse from the witch, and as soon as the weather cleared, they fled Blair, vowing never to utter the name Ellie Kedward again. Years went by with the town of Blair being completely abandoned. In 1809, however, a handwritten book was published titled The Blair Witch Cult, which told of Ellie's story as well as her powers as the Blair Witch. Although commonly regarded as complete fiction by modern scholars, there was apparently an actual cult devoted to the Blair Witch that existed until the 1960s, and possibly to this day. In 1823, a railway worker working in western Maryland went for a ride on his horse and got lost, ending up on an old dirt road that led to the abandoned town of Blair. The man contacted a friend of his, Peter Branwell Burkett, a land developer, and asked him to survey the land. The following year, the town of Burkittsville was founded, where Blair used to be, and settlers quickly moved into the town. It wouldn't take long, however, for the new townsfolk of Burkittsville to become deeply aware of the story of the Blair Witch. One year after the town's founding, in 1825, the town was celebrating the harvest season with their first annual wheat harvest picnic but tragedy would soon strike. A ten-year-old girl named Eileen Treacle went wandering off from the picnic to cross the shallow Tappy East Creek. While crossing, the girl disappeared, with eleven witnesses claiming that a pale hand reached out of the water and pulled the girl under. Modern scholars claim this as nonsense, saying that a girl could drown in the stream even though it was only six inches deep, but her body was never found. 
Additionally, several days after the incident, the creek was suddenly clogged with oily bundles of sticks, which rendered the water useless to the town for 13 days. A man ended up drinking from the creek during this period, dying as a result. The death of Eileen Treacle was blamed on the Blair Witch, and the people of Burkittsville would completely avoid the creek for many years. Things would remain relatively quiet in Burkittsville until 1886, when a young girl named Robin Weaver suddenly goes missing. A search party is sent out to find the girl, but before they return, Robin Weaver makes it back to town, claiming that while in the woods, she encountered a woman whose feet never seemed to touch the ground. The woman led Robin to a house in the woods, took her into the basement, and said she'd be right back. The woman did not return for several hours, and Robin grew more frightened, eventually mustering the courage to crawl out of a window and run back home. While Robin was safe and sound, the rescue party never returned, so a second search party was sent out to find the first. They did eventually find them, murdered their nude bodies tied together on top of a rock. They had been completely disemboweled, and they had strange symbols carved into their foreheads, hands, and feet. The search party went back to town to get help in moving the bodies, but when they returned, the bodies had vanished without a trace. The rock became known as Coffin Rock, and the deaths were again blamed on the Blair Witch. Moving into the 20th century, Burkittsville had slowly started to move on from the Blair Witch, but they would again be reminded of her presence in 1940, when eight children went missing in the town over the course of six months. Afterwards, a 38-year-old hermit named Rustin Parr, who lived in the Black Hills, came into Burkittsville one day and said that he was finally finished. The police ended up hiking into the woods for a few hours to his secluded house, where they found the bodies of seven of the missing children in his cellar. The eighth child, Kyle Brody, was found unharmed. Rustin Parr was known to the people of Burkittsville as a bit of an oddity, who had built a three-story home in the woods to be secluded. He came into town on occasion to pick up supplies, but mostly kept to the woods. A few years after he moved out there, he began noticing a woman in a long, black hooded cloak in the forest, who vanished whenever he tried to approach her. As the years went by, he noticed that the animals around him and his house were becoming more fearful, and he also began to hear strange noises at night, scaring him. He also came to fear the woman in black, and began to hear her voice in his dreams, speaking in a strange voice. Soon he began to hear her voice while he was awake as well, slowly driving him insane. She then began to give him orders, which started out as rather pointless tasks, but he obeyed. In 1940 then, she ordered him to begin kidnapping some children, and he obeyed that as well. The children were lured to his house with candy, at which point he brought them down in pairs, with one forced to stand and face a corner while he murdered and disemboweled the other, carving symbols into their skin. He would then repeat the same process on the other child, before bringing down another pair. Kyle Brody was forced to stand in the opposite corner throughout all of the murders, but for reasons unknown, he himself was unharmed. After killing the seven, the woman appeared in Rustin's room one night, telling him that he was finished, and if he went into town the next day and told everyone what he did, she would leave him alone. Rustin Parr proceeded to admit to everything he did, in detail, claiming that an old woman ghost who lived in the woods made him do it, never referring to her as the Blair Witch. He was apologetic for what he did, but was glad to be rid of the voices. The case was open and shut, and Rustin Parr was convicted of seven counts of first-degree murder. He was hanged on November 22nd, 1941, and a number of people in the town went and burned down his home in the forest. Kyle Brody would later end up in an insane asylum, and would commit suicide in 1971 by slicing his wrists with a wooden spoon he sharpened on the floor of his cell. 
An investigator would later posit the theory that Kyle Brody himself might actually have been involved with the Rustin Parr murders. Due to him being unharmed, being the only one of the group of eight that knew all the other children, and the fact that while in the asylum, he would sometimes draw occult symbols in a language he wouldn't normally know. Things would again become quiet in Burkittsville for the next five decades, with the Blair Witch largely passing into legend. In 1994, however, three college students, Heather Donahue, Josh Leonard, and Mike Williams, set out to Burkittsville to film a documentary based on the legend of the Blair Witch. Here, various locals inform them of past events in the town, including the death of Eileen Treacle, the murders at Coffin Rock, and the actions of Rustin Parr. They also interviewed an eccentric old woman named Mary Brown, who claims that she saw the Blair Witch near Tappy East Creek, appearing as a half-human, half-animal beast covered in hair. Finished in Burkittsville, the group headed into the Black Hills in order to visit and document some of the notable locations in the Blair Witch legend. They are never seen again. An APB is put out a few days later, and an exhaustive search is commenced of the Black Hills, involving dozens of men aided by dogs and helicopters over the course of ten days, but no trace is found of any of them aside from their vehicle. The case is eventually declared unsolved, but in October of 1995, students from the University of Maryland conducting an excavation at a colonial era house in the Black Hills end up uncovering a duffel bag. The bag contains the group's filming equipment, tapes, and Heather's personal journal. The curious thing about the bag, however, is that it was buried underneath the foundation of the home, and the ground above it was seemingly undisturbed. The professor of anthropology that was leading the excavation claims that it would be practically impossible to put such a bag down there without disturbing the ground and rocks above it, as if the house was built on top of the bag. Whether or not the remains of the house was actually Rustin Parr's burned down cabin is inconclusive, with conflicting reports. The footage is analyzed by police, and select pieces of footage are shown to family members of the missing students. According to Heather's mother, the footage they were shown featured some unusual events, but nothing conclusive about why they disappeared, so the family members kept asking questions. Eventually, in February of 1996, the police admit that they withheld some bits of footage because they believed them to be faked. Mrs. Donahue becomes outraged and goes public with her criticisms, but the Burkittsville Sheriff refuses to release the rest of the footage. The case is still deemed unsolved, but eventually, in October of 1997, the rest of the footage is released to family members. Mrs. Donahue contracts a film studio with piecing together the footage to determine what exactly happened to the students. The film studio eventually releases the finished film in 1999 as the Blair Witch Project. The footage shows the group becoming lost in the Black Hills as strange events occur, eventually leading to the sudden disappearance of Josh. As Heather and Mike search for him in desperation, they come across a cabin in the woods. This is apparently Rustin Parr's cabin, complete with small hand marks on the walls, but its presence is inexplicable due to it being burned down in 1941. The footage shows Mike being knocked down by an unseen force in the basement, followed by Heather descending the stairs and seeing Mike facing a corner. She is then also knocked down, and the footage ends. The Blair Witch became a national phenomenon, with people flooding into the small town of Burkittsville and the nearby Black Hills Forest in fascination. Some entrepreneurial individuals set up tours of key locations in the Black Forest, dubbing them as Blair Witch Hunts. One of these individuals was a man named Jeff Patterson, who led a group of four others on a tour, on the same night as a similar tour group was in the forest. The other tour group wound up being gruesomely murdered, along with two of the members of Patterson's group, with Patterson being the prime suspect partially due to his past history of being in a mental asylum. Patterson insisted on his innocence, despite two bodies being found in his home, 
but he is eventually found guilty of the murders. During the investigation, a Hollywood film is made dramatizing the events of the case from the defense's point of view, in which the murders occurred due to a shared psychosis between the suspects. This film was released as Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2, named after a screenplay that Patterson had wrote due to his obsession with the Blair Witch. In 2014, as part of a documentary she was working on for school titled The Absence of Closure, Lisa Arlington documented Heather Donahue's brother, James, as he searched for his missing sister. James had found a video posted on YouTube of a woman running through a house in a panic, and he believed it to be Heather, still alive 20 years later. James, Lisa, and two others traveled to Burkittsville to meet up with two locals who had found and uploaded the video. None of them were seen again either. Although the events were marketed in some ways as actually happening, such as a Facebook page being set up dedicated to the search for Lisa, there's no explanation for the footage seen in the 2016 film Blair Witch. In the film, the group head into the Black Hills, where they spend a night, and soon get caught in some sort of time loop, similar to the one experienced by Heather, Josh, and Mike in 1994, although far more drastic. As the strange and horrific events continue to occur, Lisa and James manage to find a cabin in the woods, again what seems to be Rustin Parr's house. It's revealed that Lisa actually filmed the video here that would somehow be uploaded to YouTube before they came here, creating a time paradox. Both Lisa and James are killed here, leaving no survivors. Like I said, this isn't the entirety of the Blair Witch lore, with a number of other disappearances and murders occurring over the years, but these are all the main points. Whether Ellie Kedward was naturally powerful enough to become the Blair Witch, or if something sinister lurked in the Black Hills that transformed her, is unknown. Regardless, it's clear that she dominates that forest, capable of manipulating animals, trees, people, and even time in order to carry out her will. How exactly she chooses her victims and what exactly her goals are outside of wanton bloodshed are a bit of a mystery, but that's part of the fun. Other theories have popped up over the years suggesting that there is no Blair Witch, and that Heather was actually murdered by Mike and Josh with no supernatural elements involved. But when looking at the grand scheme of things, it's clear that the witch is real as far as the Blair Witch universe is concerned. Whether or not this is the end of the Blair Witch universe remains to be seen, but personally, I don't think this is the last we'll hear of Ellie Kedward. <laughs>